I feel good about uh, our tempo. I think that's a uh, part of what we do as Ohio State is playing fast and um, you know get the defense tired where they not be able to make the adjustments that gives them to base coverages and they not be able to blitz and tee off on us as far as a uh, offensive line and things like that. So I think uh, that's one of the things that I think we're focused on uh, in this bowl practice, which is good. Do you sense enthusiasm? What's your sense of the enthusiasm for playing in this game? The motivation, obviously, it's a, in some respects, it's a glorified exhibition, but. Uh, Y'all are playing Notre Dame and stuff. What do, you, what do you sense from your teammates, uh, the anticipation or the motivation for this game? I mean, based on the simple fact that we're playing Notre Dame, and I think the things that people are thinking about is uh, our fan base, and we're both big, and we have a fan base that's big. And, and so with that, it's just uh, it's going to be anticipated, and it's going to be highly watched game. So I think that's just uh, keeping our guys going that, I mean, this might be watched more than one of the playoff games. Like that's yeah. that's that's a real thing to think about. And so, uh, with that, it's, I mean, it's just like a playoff game. But we just don't got a chance to go in that strip too. JT, what's it like for you that a year ago you couldn't play in this stuff? This will be the first time you get to play in a bowl game. What's it like for you personally? Um, actually, I didn't even think about that. Um, but I think uh, I mean, it's just I'm excited about it. Um, I think. I'm just grateful for the opportunity because, I mean, so many things happen in the course of the season. People get hurt and things happened. And so with that, um, being here and practicing and ball practice is getting better on my fundamentals and things like that. And then being able to play in a bowl game and going against a great team like Notre Dame is uh, things that you're grateful for as a player because it's not a lot of people could say they're a quarterback at Ohio State and going against Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. So. Do you, you feel like you, you improved this season? I mean, it was such a weird year um, with the reps and the injury at the start. Mm. Did you improve? And, and if you feel like you did, how much did you? Um, I did I did feel like I improved. And I, I mean, it was a crazy season, uh, splitting time with Cardell. But I think the thing about it, it wasn't always on the field. It was more like in the film room, like Coach Beck, he helped me a lot um, seeing coverages and defenses and what they're trying to show us pre-snap. And I use that uh, in games. Um, so I asked somebody else asked me this question. And my example was uh, we're playing Penn State, and it's third and like 15. And so, but they brought like a, a Sam and like, it was Sam and Will Blitz, or Sam and Mike, it's called Steeler. So it brought Sam and Mike. And I saw on film how they like pushed all the linebackers to that blitz. And I saw it and I flipped the protection and they dropped the end. And I dropped back, looked the mic, the end got underneath it, and I ran for the first down at like 18 yards or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so those are things that I wouldn't have been able to do last year. And uh, like I said, Coach Beck, he did a great job helping me uh, seeing different things. And it wasn't just focusing on like one defensive player to tell me what the coach was. It was just looking at the whole field. And um, the game slowed down for me. And so that helped as well with the experience and you know camp and spring ball and things like that. So um, yeah, I developed and um, I developed quite a bit. And I think uh, it was good for me. You and Cardale talked often throughout the summer and training camp about how it wasn't going to affect you guys. Your relationship was going to remain unchanged. But in terms of on field, now that it's over, mm -hmm. when you look back, I mean, was it more challenging than you guys could have envisioned going through all of that? You talking about like our friendship? No, I mean, trying to get ready for a game, trying uh, to be the starter, trying to make the offense your own when both of you are doing it. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, it. It was a challenge. I'm not gonna say like you know it was the easiest thing in the world. Being that uh, I mean his number or my number could have been called at any time, so you just had to be ready to play and uh, prepare like you were the starting quarterback. And I think we both did that, and uh, we both still do that uh, in every game. Um, so I mean, yeah, it wasn't the easiest, but uh, I mean we made it work. Or tried to do our best to make it work, and uh, it didn't turn out so bad. <laughs> what did you learn about yourself in that role, though? Because you've been the starter, I think, since the middle of your sophomore year. Maybe I'm wrong at, at Ryder. But you've been the starter when you've been healthy mm -hmm. and stuff. What, what what did you learn about yourself over the first several months of this season when that wasn't the case? Yeah, and uh, like I said before, I wasn't playing great at the beginning of the year. So it wasn't like I sh should have been the starter. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I wasn't playing well, so that was that was the reason why. Uh, but I think one of the main things I found about myself is just uh, there's got to be ready and constantly that you're gonna face things in your career or in life, and things are gonna happen, and you just gotta 
stay patient, be ready, and don't get uh, stressed out. Cause I feel like I put a lot of stress on, you know, myself, being that I wasn't playing like I would like. But then I had to think about it after a while. It's like, well, JT, are you really playing well enough to be the starter? Yeah. And so, with that, uh, just being honest with yourself and uh, talking to Coach Beck and Coach Meyer, and them being honest with me, and I wasn't. So, um, those are things that you just different lessons you learn uh, that I think uh, helped me through this year. Yeah, I was going to say, the Western Michigan game, I think, I'm trying to remember, I get those mixed up, but mm. it was a game where you had a chance maybe to seize right. and you didn't. Is it Was that a long night for you that after that game or a long week when you when it didn't click? Yeah, um, it was one of those deals just trying to figure out, like, why wouldn't things happen in my way? A lot of thinking to myself, uh, well, I mean, that's the thing that I have a problem with. I beat myself up sometimes too much. And uh, yeah. I remember my mom and dad telling me just <laughs> relax because I kept on talking about the game, bringing it up because I remember different plays that happened in the course of the game that I wish I had back. And uh, you just can't do that as a quarterback. That's how you drive yourself crazy. Yeah. And uh, so with that, just like the pass to Braxton over his head. I mean, in that game, is that is that a, yeah. is that a play that? Yeah. So yeah. all these different things uh, that you just got to play and. Uh, Give your best in that play, and then good or bad happens in that play. Where if I throw a pick or if I fumble, you just got to forget it and put that in the past and learn from it when you watch film. And then even after you watch film, you got to forget it and then move on. So, um, yeah, that was that was me that day. JT, I know you you and Cardale the whole time. You only can do what the coaches decide, right? Mm -hmm. It's not your decision. Mm -hmm. But did you did you think to yourself by the end of the season I'll be the starter? Like, did you have that in your head? Okay, maybe Cardell won it now, but where you are right now as the starting quarterback for this team, is that what you thought you would be eventually? Um, no, nah, nah, I didn't think too far ahead. I mean, when you're not the starting quarterback, you're just trying to prepare yourself each and every week to be the starting quarterback. So I never thought far ahead enough to be like, at the end of the season, I'm going to be the starting quarterback. It was never, like, like I said, that just never came to my mind because I was too busy to focused on we're playing Maryland, if I'm starting to be a good quarterback against Maryland, that type deal, that happened each and every week. And I think that's what you do um, even in the position I am right now because if you start you start playing bad, then you're going to get replaced. Like, it's not a quarterback that's at every position. So you really can't think that far ahead. And I mean, you just got to focus on here and now. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on opportunities that come in the fu or near future, not the ones that happen months away. We, we know that this team is going to undergo a lot of changes. I mean, every college team does after the season, but a lot of talent's going to leave mm -hmm. after this season. Can you, I don't, can you give some perspective on how much you maybe sort of know next year when you're going to be the quarterback? And there's no doubt about it. There's going to be, you know, Zeke's not going to be here. There's going to be other guys to replace. Like you've been important to this program already. How important are you going to be to this program next year? Um. Yeah, um, I think it, a lot of our leaders are going to be gone just based on that they're seniors. And um, I think I'm just going to develop more as a, a leader, still constantly learning and being able to communicate well with the young guys coming up that are going to need to step up and fill shoes like uh, you said people are going to leave. Um, so I think that's going to be something that's um, the team's going to need from me. And um, then also on the field, uh, just being able to carry a little bit more load uh, offensively, whether it be passing or throwing. Um, I think that's going to come into play. Um, if you look at our offense, uh, I think one of the things next year is uh, our veterans are going to be on the receivers, and Noah Brown's going to come back. Uh, sorry about him. Um, you know, Don Trey and different things like Terry McLaren, Paris, like all these things. So they're going to have experience, and they're going to be back on the edge, whereas we're going to be young on O-line. and. Like you said, Zeke's not going to be there. We're going to have Bronte, which is a great running back, and then we're going to have Mike Weber. But the experience is not going to be the same, but it's going to be on the edge. So I think that's going to fall into play uh, as far as our passing game. But I mean, I think that's going to be the thing. Have you looked at the schedule to see the second, third game is at Oklahoma, who's playing for the national championship? And they're also throwing Wisconsin and Nebraska in there at you as well. <laughs> Just is that kind of exciting to know you're playing a frontline schedule next year yeah, uh, awesome. with this younger team, perhaps? Yeah, I think those games are going to be good for us. We're going to learn a lot about ourselves. I think mm -hmm. uh, that's what happens when you go on the road and uh, play a good team like Oklahoma. I'm excited uh, 
it'll be an exciting game for me as well. It's close to home. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. come <laughs> being in Ohio, you don't get too close to home. I mean, I think the closest would be Dallas, but, you know, I mean, come on now. Uh, but I think it's going to be good for us, uh, definitely, being that um, <laughs> we're going to be on the road, a uh, tough environment, and uh, going to see how people react and uh, step up to play. Everybody knows you're close with uh, Cardell. Just what's his thought process right now? Is he strictly thinking National Football League, or is there a window that he might go try to play someplace else for a year? Um, nah, shoot, I don't know. I don't. We never talked about that really, okay. and uh, you'd have to ask him. Um, yeah, we don't talk about it. What uh, you've been Couple preparing now for Notre Dame here? What? Uh, Jumps out about them defensively is uh, that you have to be ready for here in a couple of weeks, uh, JT. Um, that they just they've got great players that uh, play well, play hard, um, and it's at different positions. So I mean, you sometimes you play teams and they just have like one good player or like two good players on defense. But we're talking about Notre Dame and Ohio State. You know, you got more than one great player. So uh, with that, uh, just got to be on our, on point. Uh, all the way around, whether it be blocking on the perimeter or O line dominating, dominating line of scrimmage, uh, me passing the ball, like all these different things that go fall into play. Being that uh, they got great players all around, there's uh, not a big weakness in their defense. I feel like. Hey, JT, I'm wondering how big is Notre Dame just as a presence fan wise in Texas? Man, I feel like Notre Dame and Ohio State is everywhere. Um, I think. Like I said, it's it's everywhere. I don't know. It's almost like I feel like if you would ask them where's Ohio State at, it's everywhere. Like that's part of it. You, uh, Ohio State, Notre Dame, you are gonna find them everywhere. You are gonna find Irish. You are gonna find Buckeyes are all over the world. Sure. As much as you're playing for your whole team, and obviously to get another win, uh, these seniors have been so important to this program. Mm. Um, and you have some slobs on the line too. And how big is it to get? Win for them especially. Yes, so with the, uh, we have a lot of serious being on the team. Um, just want to go out there and play hard for them and knowing that this is the last game to play as Ohio State Buckeyes and it's not going to be the same. Uh, a lot of those guys are going to go play in the National Football League and it's not, I feel like it's not going to be the same being that you're only going to be a Buckeye once uh, or you're going to be a Buckeye for life, but playing for the Buckeyes, you only get to do that. Um, so many times and so they've been uh, definitely crucial to this program and what we've been able to do uh, for over the past couple of years and uh, with that you just want to play hard for them and make sure they go out with a win. JJT, be- go ahead Doug. Before the start of the season Brian Kelly their head coach mm-hmm. said that he'd take his quarterbacks over Ohio State's quarterbacks. Yeah. I was wondering if that caught your attention if you had a response to that. Um, no I didn't. I mean I feel like it's almost like you have to say that as the, as the head coach. I mean, if he was a, just think about if he would have said he would have took us over them, it would have been like, <laughs> y'all would have had a field day, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's almost like you had to say that, but I, didn't, I don't have anything to say to that. It's a very reasonable answer. Right. <laughs> I think we probably asked about it before, but again, Last now question. that you are getting ready to play in the bowl for the first time, just how, what was it like really for you last year to watch the team that, your teammates go out and do that. Was it was it really hard? Were you were you at peace with it? Just the postseason all last year. What was it like for you personally? Um, no, nah, I feel like I was at peace with it. Um, I think it would have been different if I don't know. I mean, it's almost what I thought about. It was like I can't do anything about it. Like I broke my leg. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a pulled hamstring that I could have prevented or something. You know, it's like I broke my ankle. So it's like. This is this is the card that I got dealt, and I just got to play them and do what's best for the uh, team and what can I do uh, for the team. And I think that was just being a leader on the sideline, being able to help Cardell in the offense, um, you know, whether it be game planning or you know out there on the field, just being a presence and uh, knowing that I'm here to support. And so uh, it wasn't that rough for me. Uh, I think it was I wanted to play absolutely, but it was one of those deals like. Come on now, I can't. I'm on a scooter. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those deals, which uh, I mean, you just do what you do or do what you can. So.